Hello there, I'm Jake from J&J &J Tabletop, and I have run the Dragon of Ice Spire Peak adventure. I've made some mistakes, did some things I liked, and I learned a lot of things along the way while having a ton of fun with my friends. Now in this video, we're going to be going over the Butterskull Ranch adventure. I'm going to talk to you about the base story behind it, tips for running it, as well as things that I would do differently now that I have some experience running it that I think will take this adventure to the next level. And as I say in all of these videos, it contains spoilers, so I mean, I'm not going to tell you not to watch the video, but as far as you and your situation, I'm just going to trust that you make a good decision for you. Let's get into it. Before we get into the specifics of this adventure, I just want to take a quick moment and thank everybody that has gone to the comments section and told us about your specific playthrough. Not only is it very rewarding to know that our videos have been helpful, but it's also just, it's really good to share your experiences because anybody that goes down there and reads it can find ideas that might help their specific table because at the end of the day, you're the best equipped person to handle your table because you know the players involved. And here at J&J &J Tabletop, Josh and I are all about helping you unlock what works best at your table so that you can get the most out of your D&D game. So thank you very much for doing that. So on to the Butterskull Ranch. This is an adventure that I did get to run, and you can see that episode right here on this channel as well as the rest of the playthrough. I highly encourage you to do that. I've heard that a lot of DMs have gotten ideas that way too. I believe that this adventure is fairly straightforward and I think that that's actually a really nice thing. However, when I ran it, I feel like I missed out on some storytelling potential, which we're going to cover at the end of the video after we understand how this adventure is supposed to flow from beginning to end. So let's get started by reading the quest card and seeing things from the player's perspective. Orcs have attacked Butterskull Ranch five miles east of Coneyberry along the Tribor Trail. Travel there with haste, assess the damage, and help any way you can. Alphonse Calazorn, the ranch owner, is a retired sheriff who can reward you for your efforts. If he's dead, return to Town Master Harbin Wester with proof of Calazorn's demise to receive a reward of 100 gold pieces. So Alphonse Calazorn, also known as Big Al, is the retired sheriff of Tribor, which is a town to the east of the ranch. He's been retired for 10 years, but like many retired people, he kind of has ants in the pants, and so he started Butterskull Ranch, which he sells butter in the shape of, um, skulls. Anyways, a week ago, or as the Forgotten Realms calls it, a 10-day, orcs raided and attacked Butterskull Ranch, killing all the ranch hands except for one and capturing Big Al. The one ranch hand that escaped went to Fandolin to find some help. Now, the fact that the orcs decided to capture Big Al and not kill him is something that we're going to talk about at the end of the video because that's an opportunity to tell a story that I think the people that made this just didn't take advantage of because they never answer the question, why did they only capture him but kill everybody else? when he's a retired sheriff or warrior, which actually they say use the veteran stat block for him if you do happen to rescue him, there just should be more there than they give you. As far as how many orcs there are, well, they say outside of sidekicks, there's three times as many orcs as there are members in the party. They fight to the death because they have found shelter and food here, and it's very valuable to them since they've been driven from their home by Cryovane. And basically it just says, place them wherever you want. Traveling to Butterskull Ranch, they do offer two encounters that your players can encounter along the way. One is the horses in Coneyberry. Coneyberry is basically this abandoned town, so it's supposed to be like really creepily quiet. Uh, but basically, you're just going to find horses from the ranch just kind of hanging out by a well. If you want to scare your players, feel free to do that here. If you want to actually add something else, maybe a, an orc or two scouting, something like that. I mean, have some fun with it, really. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, and then the other encounter is Petunia the cow, which is the cow that is responsible for all of the wonderful butter skulls. As far as the horses and Petunia the cow are concerned, the stuff in the module is fine. If you want to go a little nuts and have an, an actual fight in there, I think you can do that, but I don't think you have to overcomplicate things. However, if you are the kind of dungeon master that would like to plan when the group sees Cryovane, I 
think this might be a good opportunity to do that. Now, because they're a low level, I absolutely would not give them any realistic chance to fight Cryovane. You know, keep Cryovane off in the distance, and then maybe the group will travel along and see just some kind of gruesome carnage that Cryovane was responsible for. This is a dragon. This is a dragon that has driven out a roving band of orcs from their fortress, and this is an opportunity to showcase that strength and just really tell just how powerful a dragon can be and the effect it can have on the entire region just because it's doing what it wants to do. Now the ranch itself is a pretty straightforward thing here, right? So every location here really is kind of just window dressing and the module provides a lot of fun descriptions and things that I don't see any reason not to use. As for where you place the orc specifically at the ranch, I kind of would just go off of the circumstances as to when the players arrive. If they arrive at nighttime, I think it's probably more likely that maybe they're a little more bunched up because they're just in a spot where they've chosen to sleep. And I would imagine there's a guard that's supposed to be keeping watch. However, I think after a whole week or 10 day, if you will, that they're probably feeling pretty comfortable here. So that guard is probably not as focused as they should be if not outright asleep on the job. If the players arrive during the day, they're probably more likely to be spread out. However, they'll be more alert. Uh, if they arrive, say, during a meal time, they're probably all together eating in the dining room. But as always, if you feel like something else makes more sense to you, do that. That's going to be more fun. The only other real thing of note is that Big Al himself is in the cold storage cellar, which is section B10 on the map. If the players do rescue him and <laughs> the orcs haven't all been defeated already, he very much wants to help because, well, he's feisty and... He's a big boy, so that's what he wants to do. He also offers a suit of mithril chainmail if the group can safely return Petunia the cow to the ranch, which that's not a bad reward. And that's kind of it as far as this adventure goes. I think, like I said before, it is a little simpler. It's less nuanced than some of the other things are. And honestly, I think that's a nice thing because I think it's believable. Not everything has to be this incredibly complex thing in order for it to be fun. I do think that I would like this adventure a lot more if it gave a reason as to why the orcs would keep Big Al alive. If he's as feisty as he is and he's the warrior here, wouldn't he not meet the orcs as soon as they started raiding and fighting to try and give his ranch hands a chance to escape? Wouldn't that also then make him one of the primary targets for the orcs to kill? I don't understand why the orcs wouldn't do that. Why are they keeping him alive in the basement? So I came up with a reason that would help you tell the story of what's going on with the orcs. If you've read further ahead in the adventure, you know that they are working with half orcs that are worshiping the evil god of storms, Talos. And I think right here, you have an opportunity to foreshadow some of those things that are going on. Perhaps when Big Al was the sheriff of Tribor, he thwarted some kind of plot and confiscated a valuable item or artifact that the Anchorites of Talos are looking for. Now, if you want to make this a little more believable and you want to take the 10 year time that he's been retired and shorten that down because this is something that would be valuable to them, I think that's totally fine and that would fit the story very well. This artifact is going to be used by these Talos worshiping half orcs in their summoning ritual to summon Gorthok the Thunderbore, which that name is just kind of incredible to say, isn't it? A couple of ideas as to what the artifact actually is. I mean, one could be like a large tusk, maybe with like lightning and or thunder runes on it. I don't think you have to tie it specifically to Talos here, but I mean, I guess you could if you wanted, or maybe some kind of like focusing crystal that harnesses electrical energy or something like that. Maybe it enhances the spell DC for saves against lightning or thunder damage by one or anything like that that you want to do to help kind of emphasize what this could be used for. Because at this point in time, the players haven't encountered anything like that. But once they do start encountering these half orc priests that have lightning and thunder damage, they're going to start to put two and two together and it's going to make your story feel a lot more cohesive. So these Talos worshiping half orcs have tasked their new orcish allies with going to Big Al and finding this artifact so they could bring it back and show just how much of a good bond they have. Whether or not the artifact is actually there and you want the players to be able to get a hold of it and maybe use it, maybe you have like a blue dragon sorcerer 
in there and now there's like lightning things going on and it's going to be fun for them to use maybe it was confiscated who knows that's up to you it's the story that i think is the most important and i think that would make a lot of sense as to why they kept big al alive because they want to figure out what happened now due to the importance of this task i kind of feel like it would make sense if one of these orcs is in charge and maybe just a little bit beefier so this would be some modifications i would make to one of the orcs here first i would make sure that i tell the players that this one is bigger and more vicious looking I think I would also bump the hit points up to 25. I would increase the strength to 18, giving their attacks and damage just an extra plus one, nothing crazy. And then I would put the intelligence up to 12 so that it's above average. Now, if you want to adjust the amount of orcs that are here just to make sure things are balanced properly, maybe this orc counts as two. But if the players have a sidekick, I think maybe you don't have to change anything because that would make sense. But Kind of whatever you feel like is right for your table. At this point now, you've had a few encounters that you can properly evaluate what your party is capable of. So I would just go with what feels right for you. And the other thing I would say is that there's a little more purpose to the orcs being here this long. Perhaps they haven't found what they're looking for and they have absolutely ransacked the place because they have to come back with the artifact because that's what they need to do. That's their task. That's what's important to them here. If the artifact is here at the ranch and the orcs have found it already and maybe they're just kind of getting a good meal before they go, I think it's pretty likely that they probably just kill Big Al. If you want to have Big Al still be alive, maybe he has some secret compartment where it's hidden and the orcs just haven't found it yet. And then he offers it to the players because why not? It's caused him a bunch of garbage trouble and just ugh. Yeah, take it. You can put it to good use. Absolutely. Have fun. Use it. It's great. If you made it this far into the video, if you could do me a favor and go down and hit the like button, I would greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel out a lot. I'd also love to know your thoughts about your playthrough, the tips that we gave here, or any other insights you may have in the comments section. And then, hey, while you're down there, you might as well hit the subscribe button because you know what? Let's just be friends. Also, there's a ton of really good content here that's going to help you get the most out of your D&D games. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you have a very good day. Take care, everyone.